Jeep has got a whole bunch of very interesting vehicles coming up in the very near future. Let's talk about them. So one of these is kind of a mystery, even though it's not very far down the road, but let's start off with the 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Yeah, I know I said 2022 and what's happened is that because of this whole pandemic thing, the launch has got pushed back about a year. We were supposed to have a 2021 brand new Jeep Cherokee, completely new design. That's been put off a little bit, but for 2022, let's talk about what we have in store. So FCA, who isn't gonna be FCA for very much longer, they released their financials a couple days ago, and I've been sort of poking around there to see what details of interesting stuff I could extract. Now, I'm sure you haven't exactly heard this here first, but just in case to set the baseline, FCA is merging with PSA, which is Peugeot and a bunch of other French manufacturers, that manufacturing group, but the whole thing is gonna be called Stellantis in the future. Let me know down below what you think of this new Stellantis name. We should be seeing that going into effect by the about the end of this year. So Jeep, FCA, whatever you wanna call them, they have actually done an amazing job of keeping things under wraps, which is you know not so interesting for you and me, but they did reveal that they have three PHEV plug-in hybrid vehicles coming down the pipeline. And really they, they have to because Jeep has sort of been a little bit behind in the plug-in hybrid or even the hybrid world at all. And so I know a lot of you don't like hybrids, but they are coming and Jeep is sort of finally stepping up to the plate. So their product plan actually tells us a whole lot about what they've got going on. So you see in the E segment for 2022, we have the Jeep Grand Cherokee two row. And you notice all the way over to the right, we have electrification, autonomy, and connectivity. So the blue circle there, that is PHEV. So those are plug-in hybrids. BEV is battery electric vehicles. So we're not gonna have full battery electric vehicles in that segment, but we are gonna get some level of autonomy, they're saying, and we're also gonna get some kind of connected vehicle too. So the two row, the Grand Cherokee that we all know and love right now, that is going to debut as a 2022 model. And then we have this mystery vehicle in the E segment, a three row vehicle, and that's been seen out testing. I don't know if it's gonna be called a Jeep Grand Cherokee or not. There's been some speculation that will be the name, but if they're gonna call it the Grand Cherokee three row or extended edition or whatever, I think they would have just called it Jeep Grand Cherokee right here in this product plan, but they haven't. So I think we're gonna get a brand new name for this thing. I don't know exactly what it is. I'm kind of curious, but that's that's my guess. It's gonna have a brand new Jeep. But as for the two row vehicle, TFL was actually able to capture some footage of this thing out testing in the wild. Now this is very heavily camouflaged and I don't think we've seen anything better than this in terms of camouflage yet, but when they pull up beside it, you can see there is a very large center screen there. So we all think of the Grand Cherokee and Jeep as a super American brand and that is true, but I bet you didn't know that the current Grand Cherokee actually traces its roots all the way back to Germany. And the company is Mercedes. The current WK2 platform goes all the way back to about 2011. It's actually a Mercedes design and it was unveiled in 2009 at the New York Auto Show. So this is from the Daimler Chrysler era. Before the two companies separated, Mercedes was designing this platform, which they went on to use in their own SUVs, but they sort of left it as a, as a parting gift for Jeep, so they gave them a little gift and waved them on their way and said, go do what you like. So the current platform dates back a long ways. But Chrysler FCA, they've actually gone through a lot of different owners over the years. So back in 2015, when the Julia was introduced and the Stelvio a year later, we got the Giorgio platform. And that is what the new Grand Cherokee is gonna be based on. It's this Giorgio platform, and it's a very good, modern, stiff platform. It's gonna be a little bit larger than the current generation that we get right now. Gonna have independent front suspension, independent rear suspension, and it is sort of moving up to be a more modern, a more luxury focused type SUV. And by the way, I am always looking for new sources. So if you've got some inside information, anything going on at Jeep or FCA with new upcoming vehicles, everything will be kept completely confidential. I never reveal my sources. You can reach me on Instagram and also on Telegram which of course is completely secure. So I'm aware of the comments that have been on my older vehicles about the reliability of the Stelvio, and I'm, not, I'm actually not here to debate that, but I think 
you know, this is going to be a pretty big mass market vehicle. I'm hoping and I think that Chrysler FCA is going to take this platform and put in new electronics. And it's going to have a different engine and stuff than the Stelvio did too. So I'm hoping and thinking this is probably going to be a little bit more reliable. I don't think we need to equate the actual chassis itself, the platform, with the electronics. Although the vehicle isn't out yet, we're going to have to wait and see. So a couple things we can't expect from this new platform, I think, is it's going to be lighter, which is good. Even though it's bigger, lighter is pretty much always better. That gives you better fuel economy. It gives you better acceleration and it should be a little bit better off-road too because you're not hauling around all this weight. I think we're going to get LED headlights, perhaps optional, but probably all the way around. I think we're definitely going to get some kind of cool park assist system like this Jeep Renegade that I tested just a couple weeks ago. Space found. Keep moving forward. All right, I've got it in drive. All right, stop. Remove hands from wheel. Here we go. Let's see how this works. Hands are off. It's telling me to move backwards. I got my hands on the brakes right now. Oh, lots of beeping. Lots of beeping. This is a tight spot. Let's see how it does. It's still telling me to move backwards. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is on a Jeep. Okay, stop, shift to drive. Move forward. How cool is that? Now I know there's been a couple of images floating around of the interior, although I didn't include them here because we don't really see a lot. But what we do know is that there is this product planning document that was leaked out a little while ago that kind of shows us the design aesthetic and the approach that a Jeep is taking with the interior. And it is going to be a whole a lot more modern. So that center screen that re is referenced in this design document as 10.2 inches, perhaps it's a dealer document, 10.2 inches. I think we're probably gonna see something maybe even as big as 12 inches because that seems to be the current trend with big infotainment screens. I'm sort of mixed on these huge screens, but at the end of the day, I guess I really don't mind them. Now Jeeps have always been known for off-roading and we're Obviously, this is not going to be an exception. I think we can expect the next generation of air suspension system, kind of like what you get in the Trailhawk now, but this is going to be a little bit more advanced. I think we're definitely going to expect 360 degree cameras in this thing. I think the ground clearance is going to be better too. Jeep is going to improve on all these things. Look for two wheel drive standard, but there's going to be various all wheel drive configurations like they have now. I expect that there will be a Trailhawk version and probably let's cross our fingers here for a Trackhawk version too coming down the pipeline. That would be really awesome. And the all wheel drive system expect a next generation all wheel drive system too with lower crawler gears. And we should see in terms of the suspension, better angles of approach, better breakover angles, better departure angles because they're gonna be working on a revised air suspension system. So just expect better ground clearance when you are off road. So the interior, expect a lot of changes from the current generation. Actually, I kinda of like the current gener generation but it's getting a little bit dated. So this is a page from a presentation. It's about a year old. I think this is a dealer presentation. So this presentation shows a 10.1 inch screen in here. I don't know what the actual dimensions that we're finally gonna get are. I'm thinking it might be as big as 12 inches. That is the trend right now going up to these huge screens. As you know, Tesla has this massive 17 inch screen, I think in sort of a uh, horizontal portrait type mode. So we're gonna see much bigger screens. I think the overall interior approach is going to be like pretty slick, pretty modern. We get the sort of waterfall center console design. Think more luxury. Think higher end materials. Think of this sort of moving up market a little bit as Jeep tends is going to be sort of positioning this a little bit higher up in the market. And in terms of the gear selector, I think we are probably going to get this rotary dial gear selector thing. I'm not that big a fan of it, but at the end of the day, it does make more space for the center console and manufacturers are kind of moving to that. This document does talk about seat massage and electrically adjustable pedals. That's kind of interesting. I think we're also going to see more connectivity. We're going to see more driver assist features and they're talking about some level of autonomy coming down the pipeline too. I don't know that we're going to see that at launch exactly, but I do expect that. They're talking about level three autonomy and I sort of take issue with this. I mean, Tesla is really at level two autonomy. I know people are going to debate this endlessly, but if you look at the definitions of autonomy, the various levels, 
really nobody is at a level three right now. If you wanna learn more about the different levels of, levels of autonomy, go check out Alex Roy on Twitter. He's written a lot about this very extensively. So the powertrains, what are we going to see? So we know that we have some plug-in hybrids coming down the pipeline too. The 3.6 liter Pentastar engine is certainly going to be around in some form. I think we're gonna see the two liter turbo as well and the 5.7 liter V8, I think we're gonna see a continuation of that too. So here's the thing, FCA has been working on an inline six engine, turbo inline six, which is almost certainly gonna be around for the 2023 model. Are we gonna see this at launch as a 2022 because everything has been pushed back? I'm not entirely sure, that would be very cool to see. It looks like the inline six might be replacing the Pentastar. The Pentastar is a, a real workhorse of an engine, but it has been around for a long time. Doesn't have the best fuel economy by any means. Doesn't have the best torque and horsepower ratings. A brand new inline six could definitely bring Jeep into a much more modern era of engines. That would be really cool to see. I'm, I'm a big fan of inline six engines personally. So the official launch is going to be in Q3 of 2021. So about a year from now, we're gonna see the official launch of this thing. It's obviously gonna be a 2022 model. Expect to see a lot more spy photos, a lot more things leaking as we get into the spring of next year. So then we have this three row mystery vehicle in the E segment. Again, I don't know if it's gonna be called a Grand Cherokee or something else. I think it's gonna be also on the Giorgio platform. So expect a longer stretched version of this platform. It's pretty stiff. I think this is a really interesting brand new era for Jeep with these things. Next up, we're gonna talk about something that is very grand in the Jeep universe. Remember the Jeep Grand Wagoneer from the 80s? I'm thinking of like big boxy wood panels. Remember this thing? Well, it is coming back and Jeep is positioning this as the most upscale SUV that they're gonna have in their entire lineup. Think big, think refined, think luxury, think that Jeep is gonna be moving up market and competing with the Germans and the Europeans for more big luxury SUVs. As I said earlier, the FCA financial report disclosed that the Warren truck plant is gonna be shutting down for 14 weeks for retooling. And what's gonna be built there? It's gonna be the Wagoneer, the Grand Wagoneer, and the WL Jeep Grand Cherokee too. And they're gonna spend $900 million on this retooling. This is a big deal. And they're gonna be adding 1,100 brand new American jobs. So go Jeep, yay. Total investment across five existing facilities in Michigan is gonna be about four and a half billion dollars. So Jeep is going big, they are going into this thing huge and it's gonna be creating a lot of jobs. Hopefully people are gonna be buying these. So the retooling is going on right now. They should be done by about October. And so the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer is actually gonna be out before the new Grand Cherokee. We're looking at a launch in Q2 of 2021. So the start of production is gonna be shortly after that too. So what do we know about the Jeep Grand Wagoneer? So Jeep has got a page on their site telling us that the Grand Wagoneer was pioneered in 1984 in a tradition of upscale design with impressive capability. And this is the gold standard of full-size SUVs. And of course it went out of production in 1991. So this is gonna have a lot of off-road capability as well. Something that Jeep obviously does very, very well. And so this is a way of positioning themselves and being unique from the Germans, I think. So we're gonna have high luxury. We're gonna have off-road capability. Think Mercedes G-Wagon, but perhaps a little bit, well actually a lot bigger than that. We've got a lot of very heavy camo spy shots of it, and we've got some pretty nice renders. And we have this one spy photo that I found on Car Buzz of what the interior supposedly looks like. I'm not sure how accurate this is. In fact, I don't think it's very accurate because we've got a pretty small display in the dash. This looks like a production vehicle, so take this with a grain of salt. In other words, Jeep has done a really good job of keeping this whole thing under wraps. I wish there was more to report on the Jeep Grand Wagoneer, but hey, when I get that information, I'm gonna bring it to you. So go ahead and subscribe. There's a couple of videos up on screen right now. My name is Eric and I will see you very soon.